Hello, all of you. Hello, the people who watched, lots of you actually, watched this uh, this video. Um, well, the other video, you know, not this one, because this one's not been done yet. The other one. Uh, look at the ring in my in, in my glasses. Glasses, the Mr. Ons, the glasses of Mr. Ons. Now, I've got that ring thing behind me, you see, the ring thing. And last time, I did um, an unboxing of this little beauty. Beauty. Mwah, beauty. Mwah. And um, I said I'd come back and tell you what I think of the album. Now, I made some notes. 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 And um, so I might be, my eye might be going down to here. Ooh, it, ooh, uh, uh, ooh. But I'm just looking at the notes and seeing. I, I, I love this album. I, it's, it's one of the best live albums that I have ever heard. And I remember it when it, well, not when it came out. Of course, I was much younger. I'm, I'm fairly old, but I was, I, I still wasn't, wasn't a music buyer by then. You're not a music buyer by then. So, um, <clears throat> yes, I, um, I remember it after the fact. And I remember being with my friend, Dave. Hello, Dave. And uh, I was sampling this and other Jethro Tull delights, and I've been a Jethro Tull fan and been very lucky to speak to Ian Anderson on a couple of occasions, and he's always been a lovely gentleman and very intelligent, and not just someone who, I want to talk about music and the business, he wants to talk about other things as well, and if you can talk about other things with him, he's far more likely to have a discourse with you, which is the way, actually, it probably should be when you've done so much and done so well. So, I think this is a great, great album. It came out in 78, as I said. This is the original cover there's mr anderson look and as i said this is um it's a beautiful package because you get both both of the albums there you also get a dvd and i'll be doing the third part of this on the bit of the dvd that comes out there's going to be a bit of dvd work because blu-ray i think because uh, that's what they offer here it is as well look at those beautiful things there's an extra an extra little bit you see at montreux um, Mont no, not Montreux, at um, Madison Square Garden. So there's a little bit of an extra disc here. It was, it's all been remastered and remixed, I think just remixed, by, um, my glasses are all over the shop, aren't they? Uh, by um, that uh, remastering and remixing Maven, Maven, um, Stephen Wilson. And um, it also comes with a beautiful, beautiful book. They call this the Inflated Edition, and quite right so, because I think I've shown you this before on, on the last video. But look at the bloody lovely stuff in here. So, yes, it's, uh, it's that thick. It's about 90, 90 somewhat pages. 90, hmm, let me see, 89, 95. So it gives you all the details, but as you can see from here... There's quite a lot of stuff. Now, the original album, it's a stunner. I mean, you've got Claude Nobbs, Funky Claude, not running in and out at this point, but uh, running in and telling us in lots of different languages that he is Jethro Tull. And the great thing about this, this um, live album is that it's got a concerted run of band members because these have been here through the um, Songs from the Wood and... Um, heavy Horses period, because this came out just at the time when Heavy Horses had been released. And, uh, yeah, oh, I'm a bit, a bit snotty, but I'm all right. And um, so they they know what they're doing. They know John Glasscock and Barry, Barrymore, Mr. Barrymore Barlow and um, and David, or D. Palmer, um, as, as he was now by this time called, I think. And um, they know what they're doing. They play together beautifully. They can add drama. They, they've they been through their florid period, if you like, which is um, too old to rock and roll, too young to die. And before that, um, even more florid, florid stuff, really. Um, passion play uh, and all of that. And, uh, and bungle in the jungle and that sort of war child, you know, war child, all of that. And uh, that there will be some bad impressions of Ian Anderson in this particular video. I can guarantee you that. There certainly will. So, um, this is a band who can do it. This is a band who know they're playing together. And 
it allows Ian Anderson to have a real ringmaster um, position. And I loved, even right at the beginning, when they, uh, they fin- I mean, they start with no lullaby and it's got a real sharpness and some real drama. The whole thing here has a size. You know, bursting out is right because they, they're, they're happy to see you. They really are. And they really want to tell you exactly but they really want to play these songs for you and show you how much they're enjoying working together. They're professional musicians who've been playing together for some time. They know what they're doing and then they can add stuff. So they can add that kind of drama to it. And then early on, of course, they change they change instruments. And we've got, of course, um, <laughs> we've got, of course, um, Ian announcing on the mighty marimba. Now, Ian, Ian Anderson is a forgotten front man. He had energy, he had floridity, and he had a turn of phrase and a way of not just playing the flute, which was blowing into it. That's a terrible um, example uh, and a terrible impression. But he, he, you know, he he blew into it. He made sounds into it, which is, you know, apparently how you get that wonderful tone. But he also had a real control of all this. People seem to forget what a control he had. And there were some people who say, look at me, me over, the, over my shoulder there, look. It's one of the plays I was in many years ago. That was just around the time uh, that was well, before 1997, the 1997 election. Yeah, more or less. So and we've got one of those coming, haven't we? We've got one of those big landslides coming, haven't we, apparently? Anyway, let's get back to this. It's timeless. This is 1978. So you've got um, Callahan's government in Britain at the time. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, people tend to overlook Ian Anderson because they think, oh, you know, it... You know, he didn't take it seriously and he was and he was sometimes people didn't like the kind of um, country squire thing. And they didn't like the, the, the salmon farm and they didn't like the, you know, the owned and they, or owns maybe still. And they didn't like the sort of um, the, the kind of intelligence, really. They didn't like that. There is a sense of mm, it was snippiness. He's one of the best front men that I've ever encountered. And. You're just about at this point to go into the synth years with Mr. Vitesse on keys. <laughs> Those kind of keys, not exactly like that. But you've got an A coming up, haven't you? Because you've 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 got um you've got A and then my favourite Tull album, and I'm sorry to have to say this, under wraps. I know it was a drum machine, and I know he built music around it, and I know, you know. Now, I've read stuff where it doesn't seem as though, you know, Ian's really delighted with the album or, but I'm delighted with it because it really allowed him to play. Because you've got that drum beat and you don't have to worry about it. It allowed him to build stuff and, and, and he could play in, in those songs. And I loved it. And I love that play. That's one of the things you get here. Now, I, maybe it was us talking about this, but I'm sure that, he announces John Glasscock back onto the stage and if you've been to the toilet, asking him if he gave it a good shake. But I can't hear that here. Maybe I missed it. But maybe we, maybe myself and my friend Dave, when we were listening to it as as young, much younger people, maybe we put that in and it's become something that, that, that I thought I knew. Because I don't listen to this album all the time, but every time I do, love it. So some of the highlights here. I mean, I, I've, I'll be referring. But because I, I want to make sure that I get everything here because it's got some wonderful stuff. I mean, for instance, the, the, the screams. I mean, Ian's grateful to hear, Anderson is grateful to hear those screams around the time of Sweet Dream. Sweet Dream with a scream. And, you know, the Mighty Marimba is lovely. I love the way that he's announcing the band. It's beautiful the way he does it. It is a country squire feel. I love all that. And you do feel you are safe in his hands because he is an intelligent gentleman who will brook no dissent. And he knows and you feel that... You're okay with him. He, he could, he could, he could take, he could take a university class and he could get you your first class degree. He could take you on an orienteering course and you'd be all right in his hands. You, you could cook a sumptuous meal with him. And although he'd be a hard taskmaster, you'd have a sumptuous meal when you'd finished. All of that. Now, I also love that he announces one brown mouse and he, he, he gives us a long announcement, announces it and the crowd don't go crazy. And he doesn't like it. 
You see, I love that they leave this in. They don't go, well, let's just airbrush it. You know, he, might, he showed a little bit of grumpiness, perhaps, there. Let's just airbrush it. He doesn't airbrush it at all. So you get, oh, all right, well, OK, maybe, yes. And then he says, don't strain yourselves. Just great. They leave it in because it doesn't. It's part of the whole thing. It's part of him. It's part of the whole thing. I love heavy horses here. It's ominous. It's huge. It's bigger than on the album. It, you know, these are big horses, huge. Living in the past has got some groove. They they can't not get groovy, this this band, because they've been playing together for so long. They, they, they do thick as a brick. You know it's magisterial. You know it's massive. The crowd love hunting. A hunting girl, a hunting girl. It's such fun. And Minstrel in the Gallery becomes funky i never thought i would say that listening again to it i didn't pick up on it i haven't picked up on it and this time it's funky i'm not saying that he's strutting down the street uh-huh oh yes he's not doing that there's only one thing to do at a time like this strut he's not doing that it's not it's not it's not jethro tall meets saturday night fever but it is funky and then aqualung is on here and it's just as brooding as it should be. It is a beautiful double album. It is rock and pop and folk and fantastic live stuff. Four things all in one. You've got another CD here, which is at Madison Square Garden. Now, the only one thing I just have to say, the only thing about the remixes, which sounds deeper and it sounds fuller, is that sometimes the the drums don't sound as big as I remember them being. And I don't know if we've lost something there. Not sure. I'll have to go and listen to the original again. But it does sound like we've lost something. They are there in the Madison Square Garden. Um, the Madison Square Garden part. Now, you are going to get the same tracks again. So you have to question, well, do we really need this? Because that, because this is just stupendous on its own. Stupendous on its own. Stupendous on its own. Busting out. Do, 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 de, 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 de. It brought on the beastie. That'll be coming soon, won't it? Anyway, at this time, we get um, Sweet Dreams is a little bit sharper. Heavy Horses, though, is less dramatic, but it's what they do is they say, we're not going to give you the ominous nature of it. We'll open it up a bit and you can get right in the middle of it and enjoy it. And they do. The crowd do. Thick as a Brick is delivered beautifully, as you might expect. And you, Songs from the Wood on, the, on th that version, the, the Madison Square Garden version, seems to have a lot more to it. Now, I didn't go back and check the, the, um, the times, really. Maybe I should, but I couldn't be bothered. But I was enjoying it so much. But it does seem that they've, they've pushed some more stuff in. And it, do, it, it doesn't sound like the song that I remember from the, from the album here, from the live album. It sounds like something very, very different. You've also got a bit more groove in Aqualong. But you've got the same tracks. And I have to say, more or less the same tracks. Actually, I think they are the same tracks. But I have to say, why would you not want this inflated version? And I know it's more expensive. I don't know how much, but I think it is. Well, it will be, won't it? But if you love the album, if you love the band, if you love live music, if you love any of those, this is essential because it's just a band at the height of their powers. And they would never be like this again. They never would, because you are coming into the more kind of florid, um, not florid, uh, thinner synth time, really. Um, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And you know what? I heartily endorse it. I, I'm not endorse it, but I do endorse it. And it is beautiful. So do have a lovely, lovely time with it. And do tell me how you feel and watch this and then listen to that and come back to me and say, do you know what, Steve? You're right. Or do you know what, Steve? You're a charlatan and you're completely wrong. Either of those will be correct. And we can talk about both. And I'm bursting to tell, to tell you about this. And I have. And I'm bursting to hear what you think. I could be bursting out. Not of my trousers. No, no. But certainly with excitement. Ta-ta.